a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 45. I'm your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. So The Fifth Seal is a podcast to bring awareness to the persecuted church around the world um, and to pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. I've been doing this podcast for about 10 years now. Started out calling it Persecuted Church Awareness Month and we just through the month of November from the 1st to the 30th, we counted down the top 30 countries in the world watch list a couple of years ago, expanded that out to the fifth seal and uh, doing all 50 countries on Open Doors USA's world watch list, counting down from January through uh, October. Twice a month, we do an episode counting down those countries. So it is a countdown. That's why the episode numbers go backwards. This week is 45. Last week was 46. Next week will be 44 and so on. Um, and we count down the those countries until uh, November 1st and still Persecuted Church Awareness Month. And we count down from 30 to number one throughout the month every day. We share stories of persecution around the world and prayer points for those individual countries that are on the Open Doors USA World Watch list. So uh, there's a few ways you can join with us in this before we get started. Just like to ask you to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. You can hit subscribe, the hit the notification button, find out all the stuff, all the content that is released here on the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. If you're watching on Gab TV, you can subscribe over there. You can join the Fifth Seal Facebook group on Facebook. It is the Fifth Seal. I also have a group over on, on Gab as well. Or you can follow on Twitter, um, either the Master's Dog or the Evangelical Norm. All those places are places where you can... Join with us, watch the videos, and join your voices with ours as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. So, all that being said, it is Wednesday, March 24th, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from persecution.org. Leah Sherabu gives birth to her second child while in captivity. So, we've talked a lot Last year, last season, last year, we talked a lot about uh, Leah Sherabu, gave a lot of updates on her almost, I think almost weekly. I did updates on Leah. Um, she is still in captivity. Uh, captivity. According to the U.S. Nigeria law group, Leah Sherabu has given birth to her second child while in Boko Haram captivity, both of whom were born in the year 2020. Quote, intelligence received on the status of Leah indicates that she has delivered a second child in captivity. While we have not corroborated this by multiple sources, a usually knowledgeable source indicated that she delivered a second child late last year. This means both children were born in 2020 as the terrorist announced her childbirth earlier in 2020. We are still investigating this, unquote, reported the U.S. Nigeria Law Group. On February 19, 2018, at 5.30 p.m., Boko Haram kidnapped 110 schoolgirls from the government school, Government Girls Science and Technical College located in northeast Nigeria. After a month of negotiations between the Nigerian government and Boko Haram, 104 out of the 105 girls left alive were released from captivity and returned home to their families. The jihadist militant terrorist group Boko Haram kept one girl. 14-year-old Leah Sherabu, who remains in captivity today due to her refusal to deny Christ and convert to Islam. For the past three years, she has been held hostage and deemed a, quote, slave for life, unquote, by her captors. Leah has not been allowed to any access to family or friends for the past three years. She has likely been forced to learn Islamic rules and Arabic as the group ties tries to force her to change to their beliefs. They have also likely used physical torment and mental attacks to try to break her faith in Christ. 
These kinds of tactics to include beatings, brainwashing, drugging, and sexual abuse have been commonly reported from women who have escaped Boko Haram captivity. Leah's mother, Rebecca Sharabu, recently told The Guardian that she was even willing to accept Leah's husband as an in-law if it would mean that she would be freed. Please continue to pray for Leah Sharabu and her family, including her two young children. Pray that the Lord will grant wisdom to President Muhammadu Buhari and the Nigerian government. Pray that Leah will be released and that the Lord will ease the burdens of the trauma that she and her family have experienced. Pray for healing of Nigeria, for the end of mass abductions and killing, and for the Lord to transform the hearts of those who persecute the church. So, again, we've talked a lot about Leah over the last couple of years. As we talked, you remember uh, Michelle Obama with her, her hashtag, Bring Back Our Girls sign. Leah is the last of those girls who is in captivity and has likely been brutalized, raped, um, tortured, and beaten, trying to get her to recant her faith in Christ. And up to this point, we have no knowledge that she's actually done that. The reason she's still in captivity is it leads us to believe that she has maintained her faith in Christ, maintained her belief in the Lord, and not recanted her faith. And that's why she's still in captivity and still being brutalized. So... Uh, we would ask that you would just continue to pray for her release, pray for that she'd be returned home, pray that uh, her children are safe, and um, that she could continue to maintain her faith in Jesus Christ. And that brings us to our World Watch list for this week. Uh, it is number 45, Mozambique. So a few... Um, facts about Mozambique, its persecution score is 63. The region is Africa. The persecution type is Islamic oppression. The main religion of the country is Christianity. Um, and the persecution level is very high. The population is 32,309,000, of which about 17,448,000 are Christian. So just over half the population is Christian, but there still is a lot of persecution of Christians by um, is Islamic groups in the area. The government is a presidential republic and the leader is President Felipe Nayusi. So what does persecution look like in Mozambique? Attacks from, Islamic <laughs> attacks from Islamic extremists and the presence of drug cartels in some areas have all contributed to increasing persecution in Mozambique. Christians face extreme violence in the northern part of the country Christians have been forced to flee to their homes. Islamic extremists have looted and destroyed many Christian places of worship, Christian school, and businesses owned by Christians. Christian aid workers were also targeted. Because of this, it is difficult for Christians to gather either inside or outside of churches. It can be risky for believers to speak against persecution. In the northern part of the country where Muslims are the majority, converts face extreme pressure to renounce their faith. If they refuse, they will usually be shunned. In April, a jihadist group with possible ties to Islamic State killed 52 people and burned down churches and institutions and attacked villages. So what has changed in Mozambique? Mozambique has entered the top 50 of the world watch list for the first time. In recent years, attacked by Islamic extremists have claimed the lives of many Christians and radical groups have burned down churches and schools. Tens of thousands of people have fled the northern part of the country. The country's army withdrew from important strategic locations, so a persecuted... Per so, a persecution phenomenon that was limited to a smaller part of the country expanded in the last year. Finally, the presence of drug cartels in some areas make the lives of Christians difficult, especially for church youth workers. Who is the most vulnerable to persecution in Mozambique? Generally, the country has limited religious freedom. However, the persecution of Christians is severest in the northern Cabo Delgado province due to extremists who are affiliated with the Islamic State group carrying out violence, violent attacks there. So some prayer points for Mozambique. Pray for Christians who lost loved ones and survived the jihadist attacks in Mozambique's northern region. Ask God to give them comfort, peace, and the power to, to forgive their persecutors. Pray for more pr protection that the current strain of Islamic extremists will be squelched before they grow and expand, potentially causing greater violence and persecution across the nation. Pray for the Lord to strengthen the church in Mozambique Mozambique and to give the church unity in the face of Islamic extremist threats. Ask God to give them the courage to keep meeting and keep growing in their faith. 
and pray for wisdom and discernment for pastors and church leaders as they shepherd their people and train them to be prepared for any potential persecution so they will be ready to stand strong. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this time we have to come together to, to raise our voices together um, in support and awareness of our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Lord, we praise you for the medium that we have to do this, the social media that, that you have caused people to create, that we can come together across massive uh, space and actually time, Lord, as some people will watch this much later yet still join their voices with, with the rest of us as we pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted simply because they refuse to renounce your name and follow after you and, and proclaim your gospel, Lord. So we lift up Lord Leah Sherabu right now and her family. Specifically, we pray, Lord, that you would give wisdom to the country, the leaders in Mozambique, uh, in Nigeria, that, uh, that they would be able to negotiate her release and that she would be returned home to her family with her children. Lord, that she would be able to continue to worship you freely, that she would maintain her strength in her faith. Lord, as she endures persecution, as she endures brutalization and rape and all the things that she's going through right now, Lord, we ask that you would keep her faith strong in you, recognizing that, that she worships you because you have offered her eternity and, and not necessarily uh, ease in this life, Lord. Your, your words that in this life you will have trouble, that we would suffer persecution and trials, but yet uh, you give eternal life to those who, who persevere uh, through that. So we pray for, for her protection and perseverance for her, Lord, as she uh, continues to refuse to renounce and recant her faith in you. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Mozambique. We pray for those who lost loved ones during these most recent uh, strings of attacks in Mozambique in the northern region. We pray that you would uh, give them comfort and peace to those who survived and lost loved ones, um, that you would strengthen their faith, Lord, that you would use their witness uh, to draw their, perse their perse persecutors to yourself, Lord, that their witness, their proclamation of the gospel would cause uh, those who have persecuted them to, to come to know you, to repent and put their faith in you, Lord. And we pray that, that the, these, is, these fundamentalist extreme, or Islamic groups uh, would be squelched, Lord, that you would bring uh, government reign into those areas, that they would be able to put down um, these militant groups, these uh, extremist fundamentalist groups that, uh, that seek to destroy um, your church and those who follow after you, Lord. We pray that you would uh, strengthen the church there, uh, that they would continue to meet together, that they would find ways to meet together and encourage one another, that the saints would lift each other up, that they would praise your name and, and worship you um, uh, corporately. And that again, Lord, that you would use that that witness of them even be willing to even being willing to come together as a way to draw those who would uh, persecute them to yourself. And we pray for the pastors and leaders in those churches. They disciple and lead the people who are are newly coming to know who you are, newly coming to repentance and faith in you, Lord, that they would have wisdom and um and and just the knowledge needed to to disciple and walk alongside those uh, of all areas uh, in their Christian walk with you, Lord. The the brand new converts to um, the the oldest uh, living who have have followed you for years, Lord. We just pray for wisdom for them. We pray that your church would be strong in Mozambique. That the proclamation of the gospel would be bold and courageous, and that you would use that to draw even those uh, Muslims who persecute Christians to a place of repentance and faith. Father, again, we thank you for this time we have to join together, to lift our voices, to um, pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their faith in you. And in all these things, Lord, we pray that you continue to be glorified. And it is for your name and for your glory that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys again for taking your time to, to join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Again, 
invite people to the Fifth Seal uh, Facebook page, the Fifth Seal group in Gab. Subscribe on Gab TV. Subscribe on YouTube. Share the videos. Like the videos. Apparently, that gives some kind of algorithm that makes people uh, find us easier and makes us more accessible to those who would be willing to join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm-hmm.